Hey, welcome to our lesson on isolating variables when you're dealing with fractions. So we're going to start getting into some more complicated work with fractions. And hopefully everything that we've talked about with fractions in the past will help with this. What you will need to know, you definitely need to know, is how to isolate variables. You want to be able to get variables um, by themselves on one side of the equal sign. And you also need to know how to work with mixed numbers for this. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to give a brief background on the property of equality. The property of equality is a property where whatever you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other side of an equation. So an equation is like a balance scale, and if you add x to one side of the equation, then it becomes unbalanced. So to get it back to being balanced, you need to add x to the other side. And we're going to do that today. We're going to do a lot of adding stuff to both sides of an equation. And you'll see why. It'll help out. I'll help out to kind of explain this as we go. So here's an equation. a plus 1 half is equal to 4. Now, I, the goal when you're asked to solve an equation, solve the equation, is that you want to solve for your variable. That's what it's actually asking you to do. So you'll solve for the variable of a, or in other words, I want to get a completely by itself. To do that, what I'm going to do, this says a plus 1 half. So to get rid of that, I'm going to subtract 1 half from both sides of the equation. Now remember I said to keep it balanced, you have to do it to both sides of the equation. 1 half minus 1 half is 0. So now I'm, I've succeeded. I've gotten a by itself. 1 half minus 1 half leaves me with 0. Or in other words, I just have a on the left side of this equation. Now I do have this situation here, though. I have 4 minus 1 half. And I'm going to have to resolve that. So the first thing that I do is I make 4 into a fraction of 4 over 1. Now I'm going to have to give 4 and 1 half a de common denominator. So I can do that by saying, well, I know 4 over 1 can become something over 2 if I multiply both the top and bottom times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 over 1 is the same as 8 over 2. And I'm subtracting 1 over 2. I'm going to go up to here. So a is equal to 8, min 8 over 2 minus 1 over 2. So I'm left with 7 over 2. And we can convert that from a an improper fraction into a mixed number, and a is equal to 3 and 1 half, which makes sense. 4 minus a half leaves us with 3 and a half. This is the process of how we get there. So a is 3 and a half. 3 and a half plus half will give me 4. So I've shown you this process with a fairly simple equation just to show the steps that we're going to be following, and we'll continue to follow those steps throughout. Here's one, 3 over 7 plus n, that's our variable, is equal to 2 and 2 fifths. So we're asked to solve this equation, please. Again, I'm going to try and get n completely by itself. And to do that, I have to subtract 3 over 7. Because 3 over 7 minus 3 over 7 gives me 0. And so 0 plus n is simply equal to n. Now I have n by itself on the left side. But to keep things balanced, I have to subtract 3 over 7 from the right side of this equation. And that leaves me with n by itself on the left. And on the right, I have 2 and 2 fifths minus 3 over 7. That type of question, we need to convert the first fraction into an improper fraction from a mixed number. And then after we've done that, then we will sub get a common denominator and subtract. So it's going to be a couple of steps here. n is equal to 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, over 5 minus 3 over 7. I'm going to have to come up top here to work on that one. I'm going to give these two a common denominator of 35. So to do that, I need to, here let me point, I have to multiply the top and bottom of my first fraction times 7. 
So 12 times 7, 84. And 5 times 7 is 35. That gave me my common denominator of 35. And I'm subtracting. Now I need to convert 3 over 7. 7 times 5 is 35. 3 times 5 is 15. So I've converted both fractions to having a common denominator of 35. And now I'm going to subtract 84 minus 15. And that gives me 54 over 35. That's not 54, it's 69. And with the fraction then of 69 over 35, I want to convert that back into a mixed number for my final answer. So 69 over 35 is equal to 1 and 34 over 35. So it's kind of a funny question. Seven, 3 over 7 plus 1 and 34 over 35 is equal to 2 and 2 fifths. This kind of ends up being a little bit weird. Now we could check our work by going back and converting all the fractions in this row here to having a common denominator of 35 and see what happens there. But for now we're just going to accept that answer as being correct and we'll be in good shape. All right. The next one here, um, fairly similar to what we just did, only, yeah, it's actually very similar to what we did here. So we're going to start out by subtracting 5 sevenths from both sides of this equation, leaving us with x is equal to 4 and 2 thirds minus 5 over 7. All right, I'm going to convert my mixed number here into an improper fraction. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14 over 3, minus 5 over 7. I'm going to have to convert both fractions to having a common denominator of 21. So 14 times 7 is 98, over 3 times 7, which is 21. And now I'm going to convert 5 over 7 by multiplying the top times 3 and the bottom times 3. So th 5 times 3 is 15, 7 times 3 is 21. And if you need a refresher on converting um, fractions or getting common denominators, you can check out those lessons. But again, at this point, I'm going to kind of assume that we know how to do that. Now I'm going to subtract 98 minus 15 and get 83. And then I'm going to convert 83 over 21 to being a mixed number of 3 and 20 over 21. That's my final answer in lowest terms. All right, 83 over 21 becomes 3 and 20 over 21. And again, those steps. Um, for this, if you're going from an improper fraction to a mixed number, you could use long division. You can do that and kind of get to that point. All right, this, this is the last one here. This one here is a little bit different because it's multiplication. 3 fourths of b is equal to 24. Now with multiplication, I want you to do a quick recall with me that um, I'll use a different fraction, like 2 thirds times 3 over 1, or 3 over 2, times the reciprocal is equal to 1. Any fraction times its reciprocal is equal to 1. Now, that's important because what I want to do is I want to make 3 fourths into 1. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Now, I'm multiplying the left side by the reciprocal. I also have to multiply the right side by the same number, 4 over 3. Now, what this does is 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, and that leaves me with 12 over 12, b. 12 over 12 is 1, 1 times b is b, and I'm left with b completely by itself. See that? So the process of getting rid of this number here in front of b, if it's a fraction, is you multiply by the reciprocal 
and it eliminates that. Now 24 times 4 over 3, we can rewrite that as, sorry, negative 24 times 4 divided by 3. Because that's what a fraction is, it's division. Or if you want to, you can say 4 divided by 3 and then multiply it times 24, you'll get the same exact answer. But 24 times 4 is equal to 96. Let me write that up there. Negative 96 over 3. I'm going to take 96 and divide it by 3. And B is equal to negative 32. So if I were to substitute negative 32 into there, 3 quarters of 32 is 24. And I can do that 3 times 32 and then divide it by 4 and see if it works out, and it does. Because this here is the same as saying B, 32, times 3, divided by 4. All right? So we can check our work if we want. And I'll show you how to do that here. 3 over 4 times negative 32 is equal to negative 24. It's the same thing as saying 3 times, well, I just about wrote the solution in there. 3 times 32, negative 32 over 4 is equal to negative 24, and that's 96 over 4 is equal to negative 24, and that is correct, negative 24 is equal to negative 24. And again, that's just if we wanted to do that, we could do a check of our work, all right? So remember, whenever you do something to one side of an equation, you need to do it to the other side of an equation. If that means multiplying times a fraction, if that means subtracting a fraction, it works exactly the same way as what we've done before with the property of equality. What you do to one side of an equation, you need to do to the other side of an equation. And that way you can isolate the variable, get the variable by itself.